Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope all of you have had a chance to get something to drink, something to eat, and have found yourself a, a comfortable seat with some friends. Um, my name is Colleen Clemenson. I'm a principal planner with the San Diego Association of Governments, and I am just so pleased to have all of you here with us today as we talk about transit-oriented development implementation. And I think many of us for years have been working on transit-oriented development, either from a community perspective, a developer perspective, local government, regional agencies, and we have lots and lots of plans in the works. But I think the big question is, how do we make those plans become a reality? So that's what we're here to talk about today, and hopefully each of you are able to pick up or have in front of you an agenda. We have an action-packed agenda with several panels with um, experts from throughout the nation here to help us think about this and how to apply what lessons have been learned outside the region <coughs> here in, in San Diego. Um, one of the things I wanted to do is recognize some of the SANDAG board members that are here today. We have Council Member Lisa Schaefer and Council Member Tony Kranz from the city of Encinitas. Um, thank you for being here today. We're expecting Council Member uh, Mike Wywoody from the City of Coronado. I don't know if I've seen him yet today. And then we're also very pleased to have with us um, Deanna Spain, who is with um, Speaker Tony Atkins' house. So thank you for being here, Deanna. And it really takes all of us um, to make Todd, oh, let's clap for Deanna, excuse me. Um, one of the things I wanted to do um, is just kind of set the stage with, um, so we all kind of have the same level of background information about how our region is growing, what plans we have in place, but also just to sort of recognize who's here, and if I can just get a show of hands, how many of you are part of a community planning group or organization? Great. That's great. And then how many of you work for um, a development firm or a planning consulting firm? few, okay. Any transit agencies? I think I saw a folks over here, great. And then local government, cities, great. So I think we've got a good mix. Is there any discipline that I've left out? Do we have any people in, in development finance? Yes. Small business. Any other small business representatives? Great. And anybody here in, in the finance field? Excellent. Good. Any, any other groups that I've left out? Environmental groups and health. There we go. Okay, so definitely it's going to take all of us to make TOD implementation work. So we're so glad that all of you are here today and we really look forward to a good discussion. Um, just to kind of set the stage about the opportunity in the San Diego region, I think most everyone has heard the numbers that between now and 2050, we're going to grow by about another million people. Um, most of that growth is from us having children and us living longer. And by the year 2050, more than half the population will be over age 50. So as we think about planning, we think about the future, that's something to definitely keep in mind. Um, with the population growth, we will be projecting another um, just over almost 500,000 new jobs, and we have the need for over 300,000 additional housing units to support that population growth. All of the plans collectively in the region, so the 18 cities and the county of San Diego, when you put those plans together, were definitely projected to grow more sustainably, so really growing more in the urbanized areas, preserving our open space. More than half the region will be dedicated open space through national forest, parkland, and our habitat areas. Most of the growth is projected to occur within a half mile of existing and planned public transit. So that's an incredible opportunity for transit-oriented development to occur. One of the things that um, SANDAG has worked on very closely with all of the local jurisdictions over the years is the development of a smart growth concept map. And each of you probably have one of those at your place. It's, it's the purple folder. And the smart growth concept map identifies areas where the local jurisdiction's plans call for higher density, mixed-use development, where there's existing or planned public transit. And there's several different categories. There's seven smart growth place types. Each of those place types has a specific density associated with them. 
and the, they're, they go from the most dense, like the Metropolitan Center, there's one of those in the region, and that's downtown San Diego, urban center, town center, so from there the densities go down slightly, and we have a rural village, and those are the like downtowns in the, the rural parts of the unincorporated area of the county. Special use centers, those are the big high employment areas around our um, university, so SDSU, San Diego State, Cal State San Marcos and others. And then there's a mixed use transit corridor, which is kind of the, the linear sort of smart growth that you think about along El Cajon Boulevard or something like that, where there's commercial down below and residential up above. So the smart growth um, concept map handout has those densities on the, on the back page and explains more of the characteristics of each of those. But this has really been a tool in the region to help Sandag focus our transportation investments in areas where we know the cities are planning for higher density development. So this um, graphic shows how the sort of the evolution of our regional plan. So the map on your left shows the projected population growth, where growth was expected to occur when we looked at the general plans in 1999. So the, the blue indicates projected housing growth and the purple indicates projected job growth. And as you see, looking at 1999, we were really projecting all of that growth to occur, or a lot of growth to occur, sprawling out to the east into the unincorporated areas. Since the county's general plan update and many of the local general plan updates, that has really condensed and has moved more toward the western third of the region, and that's what's shown on the map on your right. When we did the, the, looked at the general plans in 2013, you see that dramatic shift. So really the local plans are sort of setting the stage for transit-oriented development to occur. And at the same time, our regional transportation plans are calling for more <clears throat> transportation choices. We're making a, great, making a greater investment in transit, biking, and walking than ever before in our regional plans, which really helps to provide those travel options for people living um, in the more urbanized areas. So this is the planned um, 2050 transit network, and it includes a number of rapid bus services. Some of that has already gone into place today. You know, on Interstate 15, we now have the rapid bus in Mid-City. The South Bay bus rapid transit will be coming online, as will the Mid-Coast trolley project. So many, many, many transit projects planned in the next 20 years and all the way out to 2050. So that's the opportunity that we have as a region. Similarly, the Sandag Board of Directors took a very bold step a year and a half ago and um, bonded against future revenues to accelerate construction of the regional bikeway network. And that is advancing $200 million to build the most highly anticipated used regional bike projects in this region within 10 years. So work is underway on many of those projects. You might be familiar with the Bayshore Bikeway, um, the Coastal Rail Trail. We're doing a lot of work up in the city of Encinitas on that right now, as well as a number of urban bikeways. A, a bikeway connection from downtown San Diego through Hillcrest and into Mission Valley is another example. Some of the things that Sandag has been doing and working with the local jurisdictions is trying to help um, put together graphics that illustrate what smart growth or transit-oriented development could look like. And this is an example at E Street um, near the Bayfront in the city of Chula Vista. And so this is what it looks like today. And based on local plans, um, adding landscaping, adding higher density development, including office space, residential, and actually elevating the trolley through that area, this is what it could look like. So these are visuals that try to help paint a picture about what areas could look like as they transform. And I see Ed here from Chula Vista, and I, I hope we got this right, Ed. Yeah, close enough. There's the last click, okay. <clears throat> One of the ways that we're trying to support this is through the um, Smart Growth Incentive Program, and this is funded largely through our half-cent sales tax, so the half-cent sales tax that we all pay, Transnet, through the year 2048. 
There is $280 million set aside to provide to local jurisdictions to do more detailed planning in these smart growth areas and to receive grants, capital grants, to provide um, capital investments in areas that will help support that smart growth development. A call for projects is out right now. There, um, the applications are due to SANDAG on March 20th, right, Carolina? And um, we have $15 million available in that program, and it must, they must be applied through local jurisdiction. So any of you who have ideas, make sure you get together with um, the representatives from your city or county in the area that you're interested in to apply for those grants. But we're really looking forward to a number of really good applications um, in this round of grants. Okay, so what we're here to talk about today is our transit-oriented development strategy. This will be a regional strategy that, that really tries to forward pulling together all these plans that we have in place to realize more transit-oriented development um, in the San Diego region. Our project manager is Susan Baldwin from Sandag, and then we have Bill Anderson, who's the principal from AECOM, the consulting firm that's assisting us with this project, and Dina Belzer, who's also part of the consulting team from Strategic Economics. And at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Susan to talk more specifically about the project. Thank you. Thank you all for coming today. It's great to see such a, um, a robust turnout and also to see such diversity in the people who are attending this, this forum today. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of background on the transit-oriented um, development strategy that we're working on. The Sandag Board of Directors committed to um, develop a regional TOD strategy back in October of 2011 when the 2050 um, regional Transportation Plan and Sustainable Community Strategy was adopted. And so that was something that some of our, um, the people who are our stakeholders uh, thought was an important thing to in, for Sandag to pursue, and, and Sandag agreed, the board agreed to do that. So we've been working on hiring a consultant and coming up with a scope of work um, since then, and this, this, this forum today is one of the major um, products and the fruition of a lot of the work that's been done to date. The goal of the strategy is to really try and figure out how do we get more transit-oriented development projects and neighborhoods um, implemented in the San Diego region. We've got a lot of the land use changes and densities and compact development regulations that have been approved by local jurisdictions and many specific plans around transit stations, but we haven't seen a lot of um, as much activity um, in terms of building transit-oriented development as we would like to see. Part of that, of course, is probably because the economy hasn't been so great in the past five or six years, um, but we're hoping, so we're hoping that this strategy, along with uh, the economy improving, will help us realize a lot of the plans, land use plans, and goals um, that we're um, hoping to achieve. So the goal of the strategy, in addition to, to, to implementation, or the reasons for doing this, is that we, uh, if we get more transit-oriented development, we'll see uh, reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, we'll create places where people can live and work that has better access to transit, walking, and biking, so that we, again, can can lower our GHG emissions, and we will also be able to provide greater opportunities for housing and employment for all of our residents. Um, this is a kind of an overview of the scope of work for the project. One of the things we're looking at is we, as, as Colleen just showed you, we've done a lot of work on transit-oriented development and smart growth in the region. We've been really working on these concepts and these goals for 20-some years, and so um, we are not starting from scratch. We, we have the smart growth concept map, which is a 
uh, really a, a major foundation of the work that we're, we're doing. So we're not starting from ground zero. Um, we're also looking at um, the economic context of transit-oriented development. We're, as part of this project, we're going to try to focus on where are the short-term opportunities, um, what's the feasibility of um, near-term, the prior try to prioritize some of these areas. Where, where do we think it's um, transit-oriented development is most likely to occur in the short term, in the midterm, and the long term. We've been holding um, a number of meetings with stakeholders, focus groups, um, to find out what people see as being the barriers and the opportunities for transit-oriented development. We're also looking at the best practices from other locations. And a lot of the people, um, the, a lot of our panelists today are from other areas around the country where TOD has been successful. And so we're going to hear about how they've created successful transit-oriented development in communities throughout the country. Um, the TOD concepts and strategies that we're considering are embodied in the white papers that hopefully some of you had a chance to take a look at um, and that we will be discussing today. Strateg potential strategies associated with um, CEQA review, parking, um, infrastructure and financing issues, and then also we need to better understand the different roles and responsibilities of SANDAG, the local jurisdictions, the transit agency, agencies, and others, um, community groups um, who are involved in actually having transit-oriented development happen. We did a TOD network tour for our um, consultants back in April, and we covered the entire county um, in a bus and, and showed them all the different places where TOD is actually already happening and where there are opportunities for it to happen. Today, we're having the implementation forum, and we expect to have a draft strategy for the review of you all and the rest of the um, region sometime in the late spring. Um, th this is just an overview of some of the major tasks, um, and Bill will be talking about these, Bill and Dina will be talking about these in uh, just a few minutes, as will the panelists that are organized around these uh, white paper topics. I also wanted to just make reference to a lot of the um, SANDAG-related projects that are feeding into some of the work on transit-oriented development. We are developing a regional complete street strategy. Um, we have done a light rail advanced planning study for the 160 new lines of light rail that are in the current regional transportation plan. Uh, we are going to be looking at additions to our Smart Growth Toolbox that include our Smart Growth Incentive Program and our Smart Growth Concept Map. We have just recently created a Parking Management Toolbox that is on the web now and provides technical assistance and information for local jurisdictions and community groups and others who are interested in looking at different ways of addressing parking needs. We're also working on um, safe routes to transit. How do we make sure that these transit stations that we have many of now and that we are planning to have in the future, that people can get to them easily by biking and walking as well as um, potentially by car? Um, and then we're as also doing uh, the regional bicycle early action plan that Colleen made reference to. So um, with that, without any further ado, I'd like to turn uh, it over to uh, Bill Anderson and Dina Belzer. And I just wanted to make one sort of housekeeping note, and that is that um, if you all are coming tomorrow to the event, if you could hang on to your agendas and smart growth concept maps so that we don't have to print um, another 200 of them, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you.